are aware of opportunities to learn and, and we also make sure that they know where to go to learn, then we know that then they can help others. So it's a kind of a trickle down uh, effect that we're doing. We start with our own members in the group and they go and they disseminate the information to others. Why should a Caucasian care about the success of this organization? I believe, and it's just my personal belief, that if we could turn one school around, why then can't they have those same practices done at other schools and turn those schools around? If you're a taxpayer as I am, you want everybody to be independent to the point where you don't have to subsidize them. So I think if we can get more of the African American people into any kind of successful position, be it health, education, political, we are uplifting our people. When I say our people, I mean African American people, which indeed should keep a lot of them out of what shall we say, some negative positions which might impact on our taxes being increased. Tell us about the Gavin Foundation. Yes, uh, I was president of the Gavin Women's Auxiliary in Illinois. Uh, Dr. Charles Gavin was an outstanding uh, surgeon and uh, through a lot of, what shall I say, problems, he, he had a health problem and he died. And his sister, who was a doctor, and his other sister was a principal, and another sister who married a doctor, and his brother, who was a judge uh, in my district, uh, founded this Gavin organization to help medical students uh, attend college. So our, the Women's Auxiliary Group's job was to make sure that we had a, a yearly uh, dinner and sold tickets, and this is where we made our money. Also, we did a golf outing, and we made money through that to use, and we, we gave out five, uh, five scholarships per year to students who were enrolled in medical school. How, how much of a scholarship is it? Is it, is it a full scholarship, a partial? Uh, no, it's, it's partial. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, it's been so long, I think we gave a $10,000 a year scholarship to, all, to five medical students. So $50,000 a year total. Yeah, I believe it. And, and $10,000, though, will pay half of the cost of going to medical school. It, it, it'll pay either their room and board or yes. the tuition and books, mm -hmm. one or the other. Yes. Now that was before I left Illinois. That was 12 years ago. I don't know if students are given more money at this time. Okay. Please tell us uh, a little bit about the panel of American women. Oh. <laughs> I really enjoyed the uh, panel of American women because uh, at that time I had moved to an all-white suburb and I had had a little bit of trouble with some of my neighbors and then uh, I met this one woman who told me about the panel of American women and uh, I joined and what we did was to go to different women's groups and dispel some of the misconceptions that they had about uh, minority people. And I, I enjoyed that because there was a lot of interchange of ideas. And uh, I, was, I became their publicity chairperson, so I worked with them for about four years in Illinois. Well, I go back, as I said before, to all of us being uh, a viable member of a of a, of a community. In order to live in a community, we all have to sort of pull together. For instance, now with all the political stuff that's going on, uh, you, you do find people pulling together, and I like that. You can make change if indeed you know that certain factors that are occurring in your society are detrimental for your society. So it's going to impact on you whether you do something or not. Uh, and another 
of the thing I have to tell you is when my husband was precinct captain during the uh, 08 elections, he went from house to house to house and many times nobody would talk to him. They just didn't want to be bothered. But yet these are the same people who are going to have increases in their taxes and, and what have you. So they're not given a voice to their feelings. You need to to get out there and say, okay, I'm happy with this or I'm not happy with this, but you have to put your voice out there. And as I said before, we do not live in a, a vacuum of, uh, all by ourselves. We live in a community of people interacting with each other. Are there any other ways that, other than what you've mentioned that you're of service to the community currently that bear mentioning? Uh, I have all my <laughs> my bags on the floor here because I'm it. in all these organizations and I pull up something and, mm -hmm. and go to a meeting and I know where everything is. Uh, but I work in each area uh, on the board of the school, on the uh, commission, Delta Sigma Theta, uh, uh, 100 Black Women, even over at the university. I feel that it is so vital for me to be able to do what I'm doing or should do what I'm doing because my life has been so different from a lot of the people that I do encounter. My parents were well-to-do parents. They had money. But when I interact with students or sometimes just with uh, children or youth out, out in the street, I see that they have a tremendous need that that I didn't have to associate myself with because I, my family was successful, I was successful even though I was abused. And I feel that by doing this, and I'm going to do it as long as I live, that I can make a difference in some kid's life, even if uh, we say one kid, if I can make a difference in their lives by joining all these organizations by giving my ideas, by giving my work, uh, sweat, et, uh, sweat uh, equity into these different organizations and their, their missions, I'm going to make a difference and I'm going to keep on making a difference as long as I can. Why do you care what happens to somebody else's kid? Well, as I said before, the reason I care about other people's kids, I look at my own sons. They are so successful, and I'm so proud of them. And I say, if my sons have that opportunity to do what they're doing, why can't other African American people especially? I'm very, I was during the civil rights uh, years, I was very active. I've always been active in doing what is right and getting others to see that they should do what's right. So if my kids, my personal kids are successful, I want everybody's kids to be successful. I don't care who they are. I just want success. I want to see these young men and I'm just so proud of them when they are able to accomplish, be they mine or someone else's. So it's not only about me, it's about my people. So you feel connected to other people of African ancestry. Yes. That's why you, you yes. feel connected in, as though I they're am, family. I am connected to them because we have so many traits uh, that are alike. And these are my people. I would never, ever disclaim them. And like I said, by that same token, I want to boost their accomplishments. And if I can do it, I'm going to do it, no matter what area it is. But by that same token, I'm on the Achievement Academy and I'm the only African-American person there. But again, I have worked with special kids most of my teaching years and I see the need there too. And so if I can give them my ideas and my help there, I'm going to do it. Please describe for us a moment that you knew that serving others was going to be a major aspect of your life, that it was something you wanted to do. I think the first time I knew someone was different from me and didn't have the kind of life that I had, and I'm going to say her name, was Frances Bell. I met her in first grade, and Frances came from a very poor family and didn't have food. So I started giving her half of my lunch, 
And one of the older girls went and told my mother what I was doing. And I was a little afraid that my mother was going to <clears throat> punish me for that. But after that, my mother would always put two sandwiches in my little lunch pail, one for myself and one from Francis. I think that was the first time I understood that I had to help somebody. But <clears throat> in my later years, when I was teaching my phonics uh, to uh, uh, one of the classes, one little boy had a big grin on his face and he was reading in his textbook and he looked up at me and he said, I can read. And to me that was it. That one kid said, I can read. And he couldn't read before he came to me. I'm going to give you two examples of people who, who, who you might speak to. One is someone who's doing well. Maybe single, maybe married, educated, entrepreneurial, whatever. They're making money, they're busier than a one-armed paper hanger, and everything's good. Uh, another person is someone, maybe they're serially unemployed, um, and it's all they can do to get dinner on the table each day. Why would each of those people want to be of service to someone other than themselves, seeing as so much is going on for them? Well, first of all, I think the end results speak for themselves. When you help somebody and you see an improvement in their existence, you talk with them and hear the enthusiasm uh, of their voice, which they didn't have before. To me, that's just heartwarming. But if you don't have a, the financial means to help someone, you always give of your time. You can tutor kids in school. You can um, make a meal from somebody, share up a meal with, with someone, and there are meals that you can make which are cheap, especially beans and cornbread, which we used to do years ago, my husband and I. But to share that with someone. If you have money and you say, well, I don't have time, okay, then give money to the different causes so that those uh, service organizations can use that money indeed to help those who are less fortunate than we are. If I could give you any superpower, which one would you select? You know, there's that movie out called Waiting for Superman. Yeah, and about I, education. Yeah, so everybody knows what a Superman is. I would like to have the power of Superman to go around into every school and make sure that every child was taught uh, correctly and effectively how to read. I would love to see that. What's your favorite movie? I think the movie that I enjoyed more than anything else was Forrest Gump because I've taught children with learning disabilities over the years and I like that it was presented in a very uh, objective way uh, unlike with Tom Cruise and um, not Al Pacino the other one Dustin Hoffman I felt that they were taking the idiot savant and making it funny. It's not a funny thing. But in Forrest Gump, I didn't see that they were going for laughs. They presented it just the way it was. And I liked that. I liked that he was able to function in his own way. Success. Who are your heroes? I can't pinpoint any one person who is my hero. You can name as many as you wish. But I can say that anyone who is working on making a change in the world in which we live is a hero to me. I don't care what they do as long as they're working to make a change. Is there anything I've neglected to ask you that you think needs to be said now? I believe in understanding, people understanding each other. I would like to see different minority groups with majority groups having exchange of ideas. Uh, and I think a lot of the misconceptions could be cleared up. For instance, I had, when I moved to this all white suburb, I had a neighbor who really was dis, uh, upset by me moving in and she didn't talk to me for about a year. 
And then after a year, she and I became very good friends. And I asked her why she was trying to treat me in the manner in which she was treating me. And she said, well, I always thought when black people moved in, they brought their mothers, their fathers, their aunts and uncle, and they filled up the house with relatives, and that would make my property value go down. And that was something that could was easily cleared up just by me existing in that neighborhood with my husband and my two kids. So uh, if I could just get all these people together, sit down and talk through what you're afraid of or what you think about some negative thing that you think about someone else and just come together put put your minds together because uh, we've all got to live in this world and I would hope that we can all live together in a peaceful way thank you very much for taking your precious time to meet with me and sharing your ideas with us mm -hmm. I'm very grateful to you thank and you. I hope I added some value to you as well thank you <laughs>